Welcome back for another 3D primer. If you are not familiar with how this works, um, basically at the beginning of every Monday stream now, I uh, go through sort of a very rudimentary introduction into the world of 3D modeling of various types. Uh, I've covered so far uh, the basics of Maya, going through like the UI, things like that, um, some ZBrush, and right now um, I'm doing baking a high poly model down to a low poly model. So I'm in ZBrush for the beginning of that. Um, you can go through any number of routes. You could do sub D modeling in Maya to make your high poly model. Um, you could use you know Mudbox or you could use any any other program. But basically, the idea is you're going from a high resolution model down to a low poly game ready model. So, in our scenario here, uh, if I am in ZBrush, I'm going to be sculpting. I've got models set up and things set aside so that I can go through this a lot quicker. I'm trying to make these uh, speedy things that, that people can you know, quickly review and, and go through over and over and over again. So if I've got my sphere here, I'm going to model a rock. Uh, I'm just going to do my, do my usual cutting away at everything, uh, kind of getting the basic shapes of stuff and getting all those all those cool hard edges and stuff and and breaking in super sweet I'm gonna get my trim smooth I'm gonna get these cool hard edges and um once I've sculpted for a bit I'm ah okay beautiful I love it I love it and and I say boom I love I love my rock that I've made cool so I've gone through I've made all that stuff in this case in addition to the high poly, I've done uh, painting on it in here. So if I turn this on, switch this over, I actually have a texture associated with it as well. So I'll show how to bake that stuff out also. So I'm in ZBrush. I've sculpted out my rock. I think it's awesome. Um, it's a little over a million polys. So obviously, I can't. Hey, Wail and C, what's up, dude? Um, by the way, this is recorded live each time. So I, I take questions from chat, uh, try to get through it as quickly as possible. So if anything weird comes up, I'll dive into it. If it's too out of scope for the tutorial, I'll answer it after the uh, the base tutorial that I'll put on YouTube. So I've got my model. This is super cool. Uh, it's too high res to bring into Maya and try to make a low poly model off of. So I could make a low poly model here in ZBrush. Uh, again, out of the scope for this, if you know how to do that, what are you doing here? Um, but <laughs> I've decided I'm going to bring it into Maya and I'm going to do some low poly modeling on top of it. So again, like I said, if I bring this up, these are polygons, this, this whole m soup right here. So I've got a little over a million. That's too much to bring into Maya. So there's a cool plugin, comes with ZBrush, called Decimation Master. So if I just do pre-process current, I'm not going to do it here because it does take some processing power and I don't want things to crash. So we'll, you know, do just pretend we did. I have all the, the models set up. So what happens when I run this? First you want to run pre-process current and then next you're going to run decimate current. You have all these percentages that you can slide around. And this is saying, how much of the original poly count do you want to get rid of? I want 5% of my original poly count, you know, is, is what this is set to currently. But what I ended up doing was, uh, I don't know, we'll go into Maya and find out. So I've done this. And now I go into Maya. And I import what I've called the mid. So you uh, you go again. We went through this in another tutorial, but I'll kind of I'll kind of touch base. So you do the uh, the decimation master it's lower poly you do you go to export and you export as an obj i call this a mid because it's it's a mid step it's it's a mid resolution you're actually not going to use this model after the fact it's only used as a guide in maya so i bring it in i go to file import or i drag and drop it in and now i have my mid and you can see i have a rock that looks pretty much just like the one that i have in maya it's uh the texture information, the poly paint information has been stripped away. Um, and if I zoom in, you can see that it's got this uh, weird wireframe that's been put on top of it. It's been, it's been through Decimation Master and the poly count has been cut dramatically. It's 101,000 now as opposed to a million. So I have this model. What do I do with it? Well, now I model my low poly, my game res model on top of it. And so, you know, say I, I've got 
the model that I'm building. I've put a plane here, and I'm gonna extrude here, and mesh, edge, extrude. And basically all I'm doing is I am modeling to the shape of the model that I've created. Now there's all kinds of, there's these, uh, there's these cool uh, modeling tools in Maya for making a low res mesh on top of a high res. Uh, again, kind of out of scope for this. I'm just give, going over the basic idea. So I'm modeling over my mesh, making the basic shapes. I'm keeping it lower poly, much lower poly than, uh, than the original mesh. And I'm just trying to adhere as closely as possible to the high poly. So I've done that for a bit. I've modeled it for a while and gone over it. And now I have my low poly mesh. So if I get rid of my mid, this is what I ended up with. Uh, this is through another method, making the low poly in ZBrush, but you can do the exact same thing in Maya by just doing it by hand. It, it doesn't take too long, it's fine. But uh, So now I have this low poly. And it's based off of this mid, which remember is just a broken down version of my high poly. So the representation of it is exactly the same, which is important because you'll see this pivot point right here. That's this guy, this gizmo, the arrows. The middle of it right here is the pivot point, and that's literally the point at which the model pivots around. And that's important because I want to make my low poly model have the same pivot point. If I select this and then select the other model, you can see the pivot point doesn't change. Because in the program that we're about to go into, the models need to be in the exact same location. Because what you're doing is you're projecting the high poly information, this guy right here, to your low poly, this guy that you've made that is 652 tries, that's much more friendly for game resolution. So I've made my low poly model which means now I need to UV unwrap it. And we went over in this in Maya 3, I think, yeah, of, uh, of the 3D Primer series here. Um, but basically, I choose my seams, and I've already done that here. You can see I've made two islands. So if I UV select shell, hey, come on. Okay, man, there we go. Select, convert, selection to faces. There, you can see half my model is one island and the other half of the model is the other island so or whatever you you call these <laughs> whatever the the lingo changes from program to program and uh, it's called a shell in Maya but uh, anyway so I've got it UV unwrapped which means it's ready to take a texture I could paint any texture on top of this I could create a sweet shader that has any image that I want uh, let me see. Sure, we'll use my painting from the poly, uh, the uh, art posse challenge. So, assign that to selection, and oop, there. So you can see it, it can take a texture now, and it can actually display it. This is really important to do. It, your bake will not work if you don't have UV information on your low poly model. So I have my low poly, which means now I can export it. So you file export selection and I always, I always call this one low and you want to save it as an OBJ so I've already got it exported out here again to save time for everything but uh, I've done an export of my high poly and my low poly so I did my export of my mid from ZBrush but that's not all I want I want my high poly itself because it has all the little tiny bits of detail what's up Scratillion? How's it how you going man? or how's it going? Um, but it's got all my little bits of material here and texture information all painted on it so this is the one that I want not my mid remember I just used my mid for making the low poly model so I want to export this as well and it exports as an OBJ so I'd be going back to my sweet desktop folder and I would save it as rock oh, rock one underscore high I always do underscore high underscore mid underscore low just so I can keep track of it so I have my high poly exported and I have my low poly exported. So I'm done with Maya. I'm done with ZBrush. Now we go into a program called XNormal. Uh, there are multiple other ways that you can do it, um, but I'm going to go through XNormal uh, just because it outlines the process really well by doing it, and it's better than if I went into like Substance and baked through that or something. 
Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, so now I go into XNormal, load this up. I'll provide a link uh, for the YouTube version of this. I'll provide a link to download this program. But uh, you load XNormal, you'll get a high definition meshes, and you can see I've I've cleared everything out. This is default what things are going to look like. Uh, you're going to right click and click add mesh and you choose your high definition mesh this is why it's important to label those things high low so you know what you're what you're doing so low definition mesh add mesh low open so now I have my high resolution mesh remember that guy and my low resolution mesh the one that we modeled in Maya that's 600 something polys and actually has UV information and the reason we want to do this is because again what's happening is the low poly is essentially if you want to think of it this way being wrapped around the high poly and that information is being projected outward onto the low poly mesh so you're gonna get lighting information texture like color information any information that you want to bake through X normal and that's where we go to baking options so we've chosen those and I want to bake at a 2048 texture because I want high res, maybe I'll go to 1024. I always do double the resolution of what the in-game resolution would be. And I want to bake a normal map and an ambient occlusion map. Now there's an issue with, uh, I also want to bake a, uh, um, a vertex color map, like a color map, but uh, there's an issue with X normal where if you bake ambient occlusion and the color map at the same time, they override each other, it's silly. Uh, so this is this is it. I've made my high definition model, my low definition model, and unwrapped it. I've set up my baking options. I want a normal and an ambient occlusion, and generate maps. And then we wait. And hopefully this isn't too crazy. Uh, there's no texture coordinates assigned. Oh, silly me. So I did exactly. <laughs> I chose the wrong one. I did exactly what I said you shouldn't do, um, which is have no UV information. The one I exported has no UV information. So I'll export this guy. File. Export selection. It's good to walk us through it a bit. OBJ, Rocco one low. We're in the desktop version. There we go. Export. Yes. Cool. So now I've over and it's already in here, so I should now be able to go to bake options, bake, generate maps. There we go. Now it's baking. Cool. So that's our normal map. And then now it's kind of winding its way through our AO map. And ambient occlusion is just a general lighting on the model as a whole. So it's just creating uh, general shadows in all the little nooks and crannies of your model. Again, this doesn't have to be a rock. This can be any model. You can do it through. You could have made a, a machine doing sub-D modeling in Max or Maya. You could do any, like a tree in ZBrush or Mudbox or whatever. It doesn't matter. This The process is the same for all. So, as this is baking out, um, there is potential that you could get some errors with uh, actually baking the texture. Um, and that happens a lot of times with mechanical objects like say you're baking like you made a rifle and it's got a bunch of parts and you exploded the model and you have your high poly and your low poly and you're getting weird issues um, you're gonna wanna use what's called a cage and that is literally the exact same model as your low poly model but the vertices have been moved around to the high poly model to kind of encompass it a little better and it just it just helps the uh, the baking program read things a little bit better so if I were to have my uh, my mid here up and I think eh, you know I can still see a lot of this information here and I didn't get a good bake I could choose a face here move it up move this up and kinda just fix these these problem issues I can look at the map that got baked out and actually see where problems are because you know you've made the thing you know where the UVs are located so let's say I fix these issues this fixes my problem okay cool I've made a cage so now you have to re-export this this can't be your low poly say export selection and I would export it as rock one underscore cage and then you go into X normal you go to low definition and you would say external cage file and you would right click that 
uh, and then click uh, browse external cage files and there's my cage file open that up and now it gives you the warning that says uh, if you express if you specify an external cage uh, please be sure the selected mesh has absolutely the same topology which means it has it is basically the same model with some verts moved around and that's it or you will get errors so now I could bake again and generate maps. I'll make them smaller so they don't take as long. Do 512. I'll do a normal map only. So now I do this bake. Uh, already exists. You want to? No, I don't want to override it. Rename this <laughs> rock cage. Generate. And you see, because I just did it real quick, I, uh, my cage is actually super not helpful, but uh, it got a different bake. So that's, that's the point, is uh, you could use a cage file to help make your, uh, your bake better if you're getting errors. Sometimes, especially for orga organic things, you don't really need a cage to bake with. Uh, so let's see, in addition to these guys, I'm going to get, uh, where's, where's the use, use cage? Turn that off. Don't want that. All right, go back to what I was doing. Now, I want a, uh, I want color too, because remember I, I put color on the rock, so I would go to it's my normal map, thickness, cavity map, bake high poly vertex colors. Check that. Now this is important. You want to go to your high definition meshes, and turn off ignore per vertex color. Otherwise, you're not going to get a color bake. So go back to my baking options. I'll go 2048, 2048, generate, and this should create a color map. Come on, you. There it is. So, cool. We've created a normal map. We've created our, uh, yep, there you go. Thank you, Mason, for the X normal link. That is the place. So, now that I have made my, my uh, textures, what I can do here is go into Photoshop. I'll go ahead and load that up. I can make a new uh, new shader. This is just to show how uh, how it worked. Now I'm going to start choosing my uh, my textures. Right away, I can actually choose my normal. I'm going to combine some things in Photoshop for the color. But uh, let's see. When you're setting up just for a side note, when you're setting up a preview of a normal map in Maya and you choose the bump map, it's called bump map in here, uh, you want to go to the drop down and choose tangent space normals. Otherwise, it's going to read it incorrectly. So now I have my texture. Go up in here, desktop, because that's where you should save everything important. And my normals, that's the wrong one. There we go, this guy. Now, select this. Sign material selection. So if I go to, there we go. Now I go to lit version. You can see I have my low poly mesh, just like I did before, but the high poly information has been projected onto it as lighting information. So it actually lights as if it were that high poly mesh. Pretty neato. So now we go back in Photoshop, just real quick, because I want to show this part of it too. Where are my bakes? There's the occlusion. There's the vertex. So I've got these two that I baked. I have my regular color, but I also have this AO map. So I want to control A, control C, control V, paste that on top. I'll go to like multiply. So what that's doing is taking that lighting information from the crevices and overlaying it on top of the color. It just helps give an extra little bump to your image. So I'll save this. I'll just save it as PNG, who cares? Temp rock, Rocky, why not? Naming's not important for this guy, but always name things well. <laughs> so, go into the actual shader. Now I can choose my color file, and I'll choose the texture that I just made, and there you go. So, there is the low res model. That's 652 tries. It's game re uh, game resolution, if you want to look at it that way. I'll throw a uh, directional light in here. You can kind of see what's happening. 
and I'll rotate it around, but uh, I guess out of the way over here. So you can see the lighting change as I rotate the, the, light, the uh, light around. So that information, these little guys right here aren't there. It's all, all just a few polys. But that lighting information shows up thanks to the normal map. So there is the low poly version and there's the high poly version. And that's all there is to it. That's, that's baking a high poly mesh down to a low poly mesh. So recap, you make your high poly in ZBrush or Maya or whatever 3D package that you want to use and whatever method that you want to use. Doesn't matter if you do sub D or organic sculpting or anything like that. Once you have a high poly mesh, that's the thing that you're baking from. You're going to make a, uh, depending upon how you do your retopology, is what it's called when you make a lower resolution model, um, you're going to make sort of a, a mid-range uh, poly asset, and you're going to build the lower resolution on top of that. And then from there, you're going to give it UVs so that it can take texture information, and then you're going to use a program like XNormal. Again, you can do it in Substance. There are other programs that do it, um, but XNormal outlines it pretty well. And you choose your high poly and your low poly and choose what things you want to bake. And then those textures can be plugged into shaders in things like Unreal and in Unity. So that's, uh, that's really all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, Sorry if it went a little fast in the live version. Again, this will be a video up on YouTube as well, so you will be able to view it over and over again. But uh, that's it. Thank you very much, and I will see you for the next 3D Primer uh, next Monday. They're going to happen every Monday now so that I can give some more time into preparing them and maybe growing it into a full stream if it needs. But for now, I'm going to switch over to the regular art stream where I'm going to be sketching and everything like that, so stick around. Um, thank you very much, and see you next time.